Hello, welcome to the fifth and final video of the Red Cap Basics video series. My name is Ray, and we're going to be talking about defining events and designating instruments for those events, uh, user rights, and then finally moving a project to production. In the first topic that we're covering in this video, I'm going to explain how to set up a Red Cap project in a case where you have um, multiple visits. Um, and how to assign different forms to those visits. The first step in doing this is to go to your project setup page and make sure that longitudinal data collection is enabled for the project that you're working on. Um, and so once this is done, you can go down to this module here, define events and designate instruments for them. This first link, define my events, lets me uh, lets me define what my different visits are going to be. And then the second link here lets me assign forms to each of my visits. So the first step is to define my events. My uh, first event by default is called event one, but I can change that if I want to um, something like baseline. Um, so what I'll do for this for this project is I'll set up a baseline visit and also set up a follow-up visit, which I'm going to call follow-up. This is also the page where I could add multiple arms if I wanted to. Uh, different project arms are useful if you're going to have, for example, different different uh, groups of participants who might need to go through different events. Um, so maybe a, a treatment group and a control group, for example. Um, we won't do that today, but you could do that by adding a new arm, which would let you add a, a second group of, of events. So now that I have my two, two different events, my baseline and my follow-up visit, I'm going to go to this tab to designate instruments for them. And I'll select begin editing here. At my baseline visit, I'll say that I want to collect all three of these assessments. Whereas at my follow-up, it's not going to be necessary to collect the demographics again. I'll say I'll, I'll just collect the, the color appreciation scale and the CVLT. Uh, to see whether their, I guess, their appreciation of colors or their uh, their ver verbal learning has has changed over time, with uh, you know with whatever my treatment is. So I'll save this. Um, I'll point out also that both the defining the events and the designating instruments can be done by. Uh, by uploading uh, CSV files. So if you, if I would like to download these event definitions, I can do that here. So there might be cases, um, especially uh, for projects where you might have many, many events, you know, upwards of of 20 or 30 uh, different events, where it might be easier to add those in an Excel file and then upload that rather than um, using the user interface on REDCap. And then similarly, I can upload and download instrument mappings, which again, if you have a very large number of, of, of visits or of forms, it might be easier to, uh, to update the instrument mappings in Excel and then upload that file. So here's what that looks like for the instrument mapping. I have my event names and then the forms associated with, with those visits. All right. So now that 
uh, events for this project have been defined and instruments have been assigned to those events. The next important step to take before this project can be moved to production is to define user rights. And I can do this by going back to REDCap and under Applications, going to User Rights, which takes me to this page. And there are a few things that I can do here. The first is to add new users to this project. Uh, I can also assign on an individual basis what their access privileges should be. And then finally, I can use this Create New Roles tool, uh, which allows me to create user rights that I can that, that apply to, to groups of, of users. And I strongly recommend um, that before putting a project into production, you give some thought to uh, sort of what are the user roles that are going to be applicable for this project and create those ahead of time. That way, when you're adding new users, they can be assigned to roles rather than having their, uh, their user rights defined on an individual basis. So uh, I'll go through an example of that with you. Um, I will create a role, the role of a data entry group. So on this page, I can define which rights a data entry person should have. And as a general rule, it's recommended that each group only be given uh, sufficient rights so that they can do their uh, perform their role on the project and really nothing, nothing more. Things like project design and setup, for example, should really be limited to only a very small group of users. Otherwise, you just you you risk having a situation where multiple people are making frequent changes to the project. So, for a person who's doing data entry, uh, having project design rights is is not required. Similarly, they shouldn't be able to modify user rights. Um, Again, for a data, ex uh, a data entry person, data export is probably not required, or reports or access to stats. Scrolling down, uh, if a person is doing data entry, they will need to be able to create records and possibly to rename records as well. Generally, I like to, uh, to limit the, the right to delete records to only a very small number of people within a project, frequently only myself. Um, just to avoid having a situation where the record for a participant is, is deleted by accident. On the right here, you can also limit access to specific forms. And this is particularly useful in cases where uh, it, there's blinding in a study. Uh, so if, if that's the case, any blinded staff should make sure that their access to forms that might unblind them is, is limited to no access. But that's not the case for this study. Uh, this data entry person, I'm going to say, can view and edit all three of the forms that we have. I'm going to click Create Role. And now, if I would like to add a new user to this project, I could type that in here. Um, I'll just add a training account. So I'll we'll assign this person to the data entry role. So in doing this, under data entry, they'll now have all those rights that I just specified. Um, I will point out too that uh, this user rights um, module is another one that Steve covers in more detail in the data management, security, and randomization uh, course and also video series. So if you'd like more information on this, you can uh, do that by looking through those videos. Creating user roles and adding new users is one of the last steps generally that you'll take before a project is ready to be moved into production. Uh, but I will talk a little bit more about that now um, as sort of the last topic that we'll cover in this video. Moving a project to production is um, the final step that you need to do before you can actually start collecting data in your project. Um, but before you do that, it's important to make sure, first of all, that all of these steps have been um, performed thoroughly and completely. 
And finally, that your project has been tested um, in detail. Typically, what testing a project will look like for me is um, adding records, uh, making sure that I've tried entering some test data for each form, um, played around with entering data that's out of range for uh, to make sure that the, the validation that I've set up is correct. I also will typically add some key users um, and, and ask them to, to test the forms for me as well. Uh, and this is useful for a couple of reasons. First, it lets me test out the different user roles that I might have set up. Um, so the, you know, the data entry kind of user roles. And then also uh, users who have more of a data collection, data entry expertise will often have sort of a different perspective on the functioning of these forms than I will. And a lot of times we'll uh, be able to catch errors that I myself might have missed as, uh, as more of a you know, data manager kind of role. It's also important to make sure that users are properly trained on how to use each of these forms and how to use REDCap. Um, so once you're confident that forms have been set up properly, events are defined, um, instruments have been designated to your events, um, you know, for longitudinal studies where that's necessary, um, that your user rights are, are all set up properly, uh, and that the project has been tested, at this point you should be ready to move the project to production. So this is done through this last link at the bottom of the page. And it's a two-step process. So the first thing is this move to production request form, which captures some details about the project that you just prepared, and the study that's prepared for. It asks you specifically, have you reviewed user rights and tested the project? Has the PI signed off? So once data has been entered into this form, you can submit it. The next thing to do is to click the I agree button here. And once that's done, your, uh, your move to production request and your request to to have this uh, this project approved is sent to uh, the CAMH admin group, uh, the REDCap admin group. So someone from the group will review the project with specific attention to whether you're collecting identifiers, and if you are, whether you have uh, you know permission, whether it's appropriate to be doing that. Um, so uh, a REDCap admin will review your project and um, if it's approved, you will get an automated email sent to, uh, to whatever email address is associated with your REDCap account, telling you that the project is, ready, is, is now in production and is ready for, for data capture. Um, I'll point out that uh, one of the reasons that you wanna test a project so thoroughly before it goes into, pro into production is because it's generally best to avoid making changes to any forms or to project design once you've already started collecting data in it. And uh, in REDCap, once you have your project in, in production, it becomes a lot harder or at least more time consuming to make changes to your forms. Uh, the process for doing that is uh, you're able to access the on online designer and enter what's called draft mode. And you, you draft your changes um, using the online designer and then submit those drafted changes again to a REDCap admin who reviews them. And they will make sure that the changes that you're making to that project are not um, going to uh, n adversely affect the data that you're capturing in any, or in, in any way or are gonna create problems for, for data capture when you have um, incongruent I guess, between uh, sort of data before the change and after the change. Um, so for, for changes um, after your project's in production, they'll be reviewed by a REDCap admin um, and approved as long as there are no concerns about how they're gonna affect your data. For changes that are very small or sort of cosmetic, they'll be approved automatically, um, but you still do need to make those changes in draft mode first. 
Okay, that just about covers uh, moving the project into production. One last thing that I'll say is, uh, since this is a test project, we're never going to be moving it into production. Um, if you've been following along and would like to delete this project, you know, once you feel that you've uh, you're done sort of testing things out, you can do that by clicking on other functionality and scrolling down here to delete the project. Type in delete and clicking on delete the project here will get rid of this project completely. Um, well, that covers uh, all of the material for the Red Cap Basics workshop. Uh, if you made it to the end, thanks very much for sticking with me. If you would like uh, some more help with Red Cap, or you have questions about any of the material that's been covered, you can get in touch with us um, through the, the Red Cap support uh, email address. There's lots of information on Insight about how to reach us. Uh, this material is also covered in the Red Cap Basics work workshop, which is typically uh, given about once a month at Queen Street and also at Russell Street. So if you'd like to go through this with an instructor in person, you can attend one of those workshops. Um, thank you very much.